everyone, it's Annie, and today I'm here to do my December 2020 wrap up. Yes, it's the end of 2020. <laughs> so happy. Okay, so sit back, relax, and enjoy my last wrap up of 2020. The first book I read was All Systems Read by Martha Wells. It is the first book of the Murderbot series, and I really, really enjoyed it. I really liked Murderbot. <laughs> They're really funny, and I love sci-fi, as you guys know, so I'm definitely going to continue this series. If you watched my January TBR video, you know that I am going to read the second one in January, and yeah, I'm really liking it so far, and I'm glad I started it. The second book I read was The Fourth Island by Sarah Tolmy, and this was also a short novella. I believe it was published by Tor. I really should have checked. <laughs> and I really, really loved this. It was not what I expected, but it was very magical, really, really interesting about this island off the coast of Ireland and people show up there when they're lost is the basic concept and you get to just see how they live on this remote island cut off from everything else and their pasts and how they make a new life on this island and it's just a really really magical story with a lot of Irish intrigue let's say uh yeah I really loved it and I definitely recommend it, uh, especially if you like historical magical realism, if that's a thing. <laughs> Next up is The Seven and a Half Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. If you watched my Worst Books of 2020 video, you know that I didn't enjoy this that much. I still gave it three stars, but it was disappointing. I think, for me, it first of all was not what I was looking for. It was too long, <laughs> and the twist was not surprising to me, and if I am going to read like a mystery thriller, I need the twist to be a surprise, and unfortunately I guessed it. I did not enjoy this that much, unfortunately. Oh well. <laughs> the next book I read was The Honjin Murders. I really enjoyed this. It's apparently a famous Japanese classic mystery, a la Agatha Christie, which it definitely is. I have realized since starting booktube and reading more that I don't really like detective novels because the detective character tends to be a know-it-all, <laughs> which makes sense. And it it's the same in this book, but regardless, I really enjoyed it and I thought it was a great story, like how the murder actually happened was really really interesting and creative and I did not guess this twist. So yeah, I definitely recommend it and it's also quite short, so it's an easy read. The next book I read is also very short, it is Kitsune Tsuki, and I thought it was interesting. It's about how Kitsune or like fox spirits in Japan can possess people and they're considered like evil spirits, kind of, and it's about this person who goes to help this family find the evil Kitsune. I do have a complaint about this book. It was really weird because, yes, while some cultural words like Kitsune or like titles should be left in Japanese, we don't need words like thank you to be in Japanese. I feel like it was kind of cringy almost, and it just took away from the story. Uh, and I think it could alienate readers who don't have a background in the Japanese language. So I thought it was really unnecessary, but the story itself was interesting, and I do recommend it. The next book I read was Rune Song by Julia Ember. I really loved this book. <laughs> I match it too. I really loved it. It's a, a sapphic dark fantasy, kind of a Phantom of the Opera inspired story, which I love. And it's about this girl who is trained by this evil queen to sing, and her singing hurts people. 
So they use her singing powers to hurt the disgraced nobility of this kingdom. But of course, a member of this disgraced nobility is the main character's childhood friend, and they fall in love, and it's really, really great. I didn't really know what to expect from this book, but I'm so glad it was really good. I loved it so much, so please, especially if you're looking for a good sapphic book, definitely check this out. The next book I read was The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Penner. I won't go too much into this because I already did a review, which you can see, I'll link up there, but it is about an apothecary in 18th century London who sells poison to women to kill men who abuse them. It is amazing. One of the best books I read this year. Five stars, hands down. Absolutely magical. Just, oh my god, one of my favorite books ever. The next book was not one of my favorite books ever, unfortunately. It is The Bear and the Nightingale. I liked it. I did like it. I loved the setting. I loved the Russian folklore aspects. But I did not love the pacing. See, this is why I don't really like fantasy series, because I feel like they are very slow-paced. <laughs> it was too slow for me, but I really, really liked the overarching story, I guess. So I am going to continue this series starting in January. And yeah, I liked it. I just wish it wasn't so slow. <laughs> the next book is When the Tiger Came Down the Mountain by Nivelle. I loved it so much. It's the companion novella to The Empress of Salt and Fortune, and I thought this one was great. It was so creative. Like, these tigers who can transform into people? Like, that's so cool. And of course, Chi, an amazing, amazing character. I love them so much. And this was just incredibly creative. I gave it five stars as well as The Empress of Salt and Fortune. They're both such interesting stories, and I can't really choose which one I liked the most, to be honest. I'm not, I'm not sure. Both are queer, both have absolutely amazing imagery and really, really beautiful writing. Characters were amazing. Please, if you have not checked out Neva yet, please read her books. Next, we have Fae Child. Um, I don't know why I read this. <laughs> I know, okay, I know why. It was for the Reindeer Readathon, for the prompt Rudolph, a character that doesn't fit in, and the main girl gets brought into this fairy realm from the human world, so of course she doesn't fit in, and I don't really read middle grade that much. <laughs> And I'm going to be honest, I thought it was a bit mediocre. <laughs> I got the arc from NetGalley, so thank you NetGalley, but it was fine. If I was a kid, maybe like 10 to 12, I think I would have really enjoyed this. But again, I, I think it was a little bit too young for me, so I wasn't really the right audience for it. But it was cute nonetheless. The next book I read was The Mermaid from Jeju by Sumi Han. This was, again, another one of my all-time favorite books of 2020. This book was absolutely breathtakingly gorgeous. I mean, just look at the cover and you can tell. <laughs> it was perfect. It was amazing. I loved it so much. It was perfect for me because I love the time period that it was written in the aftermath of the Japanese occupation of the Korean Peninsula, and the main character is a henya. She dives for like deep sea delicacies like abalone and sea urchin. She is such a beautiful character. I love her so much. I love her family. I love how descriptive the author is of Jeju and Jeju's nature and the people of Jeju and the community of it, and the way she describes everything that happens is just so beautiful. <laughs> and the Jeju massacre, when it happens, is so heartbreaking to read about. I mean, that's not a spoiler because it's real history. Oh man, it's just, it's beautiful. The one thing I will say 
why I rated it 4.5 instead of a full 5 on Goodreads is because part 2 was significantly weaker than part 1. Thankfully part 1 is longer than part 2, but while part 2 isn't bad, definitely not bad, it's just much weaker, I think, because maybe I didn't connect with the characters as much. I don't know, but that's the only caveat I have about this absolutely beautiful book. The next book I read was We Play Ourselves by Jen Silverman. I talked about this in my worst books of 2020 video. <laughs> I really disliked this book very strongly. <laughs> I hated the main character so much and I thought it was not advertised correctly. It's advertised as this playwright gets in some sort of scandal so she moves and she meets this group of girls who are who have a fight club like the movie and it sounds super interesting and unfortunately that was a very small part of the book instead we focus on the main character and her self-pity <laughs> and i really i understand the point of the book that you know it's never too late to start something new or move forward in your chosen career. I thought it was a nice message, but I really, this book was not for me, unfortunately. The next book, <laughs> drumroll, Les Mis. <laughs> yes, I read this. Oh my god, it took so long. <laughs> the audiobook was 57 hours. Yeah. Okay, Victor, I have a question. Why did we need so much description about the Parisian sewer system? Why? Why did we need that? I didn't need it. I don't think anyone needed it. I'm joking. I know he's very long-winded about things that really don't matter, and this book could have been way shorter, but I absolutely adore the story. I know it like the back of my hand, and I am so happy that I finally read the source material of this. I feel like, I don't know, obviously you can be a real lame Miz fan without reading this, seriously. I don't think you need to read this, but for me personally, it, it made me feel closer to the story and the musical that I love so much, and I'm really proud of myself that I read this. The next book is The Ravens. I also don't know why I read this. <laughs> Again, it was an arc from NetGalley. Thank you, NetGalley. And it's about this coven that is disguised as a sorority in a university. I was not a sorority girl, if you couldn't tell. It's not something I'm interested in, but I like witches a lot, so I guess that's why I read it. Uh, I did not appreciate the love triangle. I, it was just super unnecessary, I thought, and I think it was quite surface level. I think if we focused on the motivations, like, I, I don't know, it just, I don't want to spoil anything, but the ending seemed like it came out of left field. Like, there were tiny hints, but the character that was so integral for the ending was not really focused on at all during the whole entire book and I wish she was because the two main characters I did not like <laughs> personally but I think I still gave this three stars I did like it I really liked the idea of witch's coven being a sorority I think that's cool it's a really cool idea but I think the execution was a bit lacking unfortunately the next book I read was In Order to Live by Yeonmi Park. I don't know why it took me so long to read this. I am very interested in books about North Korea. Yeah, I mean, there's not much to say. It's her story. I know there's some sort of controversy, like people say that she made parts up or she's inconsistent. I don't know. <laughs> Regardless, it's her story. I can't comment on it. If you want to learn more about North Korea, this is a really important book on the subject, and obviously it's one of the most famous books on the subject, and I think it's not just her personal story, but also a story about North Korea when she was there, and it lets you learn about some North Korean culture as well. So I think it's a very, very, very interesting read. And I recommend it. The next book I read was Wintering by Catherine May. It was nonfiction. I really enjoyed it. 
I thought it was very, very nice, a very nice subject, a very nice uh, message for us. It's about how basically sometimes we need to take a break. Sometimes we need to step back and look at everything going on in our lives and take a break. And obviously, and she acknowledges that it's not always possible to do that for everyone, but she has a lot of really personal, interesting stories from herself and other people. And I thought it was a really beautiful book. I, I thought it was perfect for the times that we're living in now. And one thing I really loved was that her son was having a hard time in school and he was very, very unhappy and she decided to homeschool him and he became happy again and I think that's so important. She seems like a really great mother and a really self-aware person and I just, I just really really enjoyed reading this book. Okay, now we're getting into a lot of arcs that I read from NetGalley because I just started NetGalley this month and I went a little... <laughs> overboard with requesting arcs and I got a lot sent to me so I had to read them all. <laughs> but they were all mostly really good. The first one was Winter Pasture. Now this is about a Han Chinese woman who goes to live with Kazakh herders and it's amazing. It's a really really interesting and beautiful look at this way of life that is sadly disappearing. It's just great, and I love her photos that she includes in the book. I wish there were more. The one thing I will say, just a warning for people, there are instances of animal abuse. So that was upsetting, <laughs> but I think it's a really beautiful book. It's also a pretty short read, and it's great if you want to learn more about the minorities of China. The next book was The Phone Booth at the End of the World. I gave this five stars immediately. It is beautiful. It follows these two people. The woman lost her mother and her daughter in the 2011 tsunami, and the man, his wife, passed away. And seeing them, oh, it's just so beautiful. They both find this phone booth that is disconnected but allows people to talk to their dead loved ones and it's a way of coping and it is just absolutely beautiful. This book is sad but also hopeful and it has a really calming quality to it and it's just a beautiful look at the human experience of grief. I highly recommend this book. It is just, uh, I can't say enough good things about it. Please, when it comes out, please read it. It is absolutely gorgeous. Following these two people and their personal growth, their personal way that they deal with their grief, and also the way that they grow together, closer together. It's just beautiful. Please read this. The next arc is Making Space by Jane Hardy. I really enjoyed this. It's a self-improvement book about how to set healthy boundaries and what to do if they are violated. I think this book is very important for people to read. <laughs> it's important for me too. Boundaries are super difficult. It's a pretty short read, so if you want a good basic overview of boundaries and why they're important, I think this is a great starting point. Next two arcs are also self-improvement books. The first one is Hello Habits by Fumio Sasaki. I think a lot of people know his first book, which is Goodbye Things, all about minimalism. And Hello Habits was really nice. I really liked his writing style and his voice and his unique perspective on things. And I thought it was a really nice, again, it was a pretty short read, but it was a nice overview of incorporating and starting good habits in your life while trying to break bad ones. So if you're interested in that sort of subject, definitely check this one out. And the last arc is Nixon. Now, I know there's a trend about these little beautiful, you know, really cute Nordic books about a specific Nordic word that is like the meaning of life or something. <laughs> but 
I picked this up because I like those kind of books, and this book was a breath of fresh air. I really, really enjoyed this. It was a self-help book, but it's not the kind of self-help book that most people are familiar with, I think. A lot of self-help books, the author kind of feels like they're talking at you and telling you what to do. But this author, it's more like a conversation between her and the reader. And it's so friendly in a really nice chatty way, but it's not overdone. I loved the format of the book. The illustrations are minimal, but they're super beautiful when they're there. I thought it was really great. And she, yeah, the concept is that Nixon means doing nothing. And the whole book is about why doing nothing is important for us. And again, I really think that the author was very different from most self-help authors because she acknowledges that doing nothing is not always possible for people of, you know, different economic standings and things like that. She's, she's just really great. I love her writing style. I love the subject of it. I also love the little bit of Dutch culture that we get from the book. And I feel like I learned a lot. So highly recommend this. The next book is Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. This is my second Agatha Christie book that I've read this year. The first one was And Then There Were None. I liked And Then There Were None better than this. <laughs> like I said, I think I don't really like reading about genius detective characters because they kind of come off as full of themselves. But I thought it was a creative story. I think it definitely showed its age in a lot of ways. <laughs> but it was nice, and I definitely see why people like it. And I read it on Christmas Day. It's a perfect book for this season, I think, because it's snowy and mysterious. So yeah, this was a fun read. And the last book is also an arc, actually. I'm almost done with it at the point of filming. I have like 20 pages left, and it is J.R.R. Tolkien's biography. Okay, I love The Lord of the Rings. Might not be surprising, because I think a lot of people do. I love The Silmarillion, I love The Hobbit, and I love that Tolkien was a linguist like me. <laughs> so I always felt a really good connection with him and he's so inspiring to me, and I realized that I really didn't know anything about his life other than what he studied and taught, so I wanted to learn more, and this was perfect. It was, it's really, really good. I think I'm going to rate it four stars. It's a very short biography. It's under 200 pages, which is kind of surprising considering he's such a big literary figure. So that was surprising to me. I think it was a little bit dense. Even though it's so short, it was written quite densely, almost like a thesis paper. <laughs> so it was a little bit hard to read sometimes, but it definitely has a lot of great information. If you're at all interested in Tolkien's life, please read this book. I highly recommend it. All right, so those are all the books I read this December. I am so glad 2020 is done, <laughs> but I had a really great reading month this December. Even though I read Les Mis, which took so long, I still read a lot of books, and I really loved most of the books that I read, and I started Net Galley, so it was great! It was a really fun reading month, and I hope you guys had a good reading month too. Please give this video a like, and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed for more bookish videos. I'll see you next time!